a pleasant morning to everyone. Those present here at the George Price Center for Peace and Development, and for those following us via the live web stream, a pleasant morning to you. Welcome to the Regional Debate Competition 2016, today featuring John Paul II Junior College and Galen University. The topic at hand today be it resolved that gender identity is a product of nature. I invite you to kindly stand for the Belizean National Anthem, and I call on Marilyn Vanson to lead us in this endeavor. Good morning. Please feel free to join me as I sing the National Anthem. Oh, land of the free by the Caribbean Sea, oh, manhood we bear, should I leave it? No tears and remorse, the spouse must plead this child, where the knock and knock mercy, the blood of the sires which are the blessing, but freedom from slavery. Oppressions wrought by the might of truth and the grace of God. No longer shall we be heroes of the world. All eyes, these stars of the boldness has blessed thee with birth on top on mountains and valleys our prairies roll o'er valleys and the men by ants and bones of the end of this heritage hope from proud Rihanna to old Charleston through coral lines over blue lagoon Keep watch with the angel, the stars and more. But freedom comes to tomorrow's noon. All eyes, these stars of the day in this Please remain standing as I call on Pastor Scott Sturm from Jubilee Ministries for the invocation. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence today. Lord, I thank you for all of these young leaders. I thank you for what you're stirring, Lord God, in their hearts for the future of our nation. And Lord God, we call forth your blessing. We call forth your presence and your anointing. Lord, I just thank you for wisdom to flow in this time. And Lord, just stir in every one of our hearts, Lord God, our part and our role for us to play, Lord God, in taking our nation forward. And so, Lord, we thank you for all the coordinators and everyone that's pulled this event together. Lord God, we thank you for everything to flow smoothly today. And we give you all the glory and all, all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Sturm. You may be seated. Today we have some of the brightest minds from the Cayo District who will be debating this uh, timely topic. 
But at this time, I call on Mr. Arnaldo Villas, the Regional Manager, Southern Region of the Social Security Board, to present to you the welcome address. Put your hands together for Mr. Villas. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Patrick Jones, and good morning to one and all. I acknowledge the presence of the two participating schools, um, distinguished judges, uh, moderator, Dr. Leroy Almendares, timekeepers, tabulators, public in general, coaches, teachers. I welcome you all to this segment of the national debate for 2016, sponsored by, proudly sponsored by Social Security Board. It is indeed an honor and pleasure to stand here before you to deliver this keynote address, and I must be grateful to our organizers who are also here. The topic for the debate this morning that will see the competition between John Paul II Junior College and Galen University, which are undoubtedly two very strong teams, is be it resolved that gender identity is a product of nature. As I've mentioned in my previous addresses of this type, the slogan for this year's national debate is Social Security Board Cultivating and Informed Beliefs Through Conversations. I personally like to make mention that this slogan, the national debate that we are conducting, is a fragment of the global concept of communication for development, which is generally known as C4D. So um, the C4D is a broad term used to refer to all different type of, type of communication that need to take place in societies <clears throat> Sorry, if sustainable democratic development is to occur. Initially, this concept was developed after World War II and has come to be seen as a way to amplify voice, facilitate meaningful participation, and foster change. I chose to mention C40 because this is precisely what we are doing at Social Security. In a sense, we are opening conversations and communication for development. We're developing people's mind, young people's mind, to enable them to understand, negotiate, and partake in decision-making that affects their lives and, in extension, our lives. A short overview of the debate of this year's event. Um, this year, debate marks the first year of an intended series of annual national debates. On March 20th, 2015, last year, we hosted a pilot debate which saw the participation of only the Belize and Cairo districts. This year, we chose to engage the entire country, all communities, and 10 schools have been participating, although unfortunately, and they, they have been, some have been el eliminated. But the 10 competing school this year, schools this year was, were John Paul Second Junior College, school that is with us this morning, Corazal Junior College, Belize Adventist Junior College, University of West Indies, of the West Indies, Open Campus Belize, University of Belize, Galen University, that's also here with us, Secret Heart Junior College, Ecumenical Junior College, and Independence Junior College. Still competing this morning, for the last spot in the semi-final round, Gillian University and Sin, Sin, I mean John Paul Second Junior College. Every time I see this name, it comes to the, the Pope, Saint John, the previous Pope. <clears throat> patiently waiting for them, and take note of it, of it patiently waiting for you, Gillian and John Paul, are the other three contenders that those are Corsair Junior College, St. John's Junior College, and Ecumenical Junior College, who successfully made it through their rounds to the next round in the national competition. 
the immediate in the northern, central, and southern regions, respectively. Once again, I was mentioned that the topics given to you all were chosen um, from amongst 36 topics that were submitted by you all, the participating schools, and we had a computerized raffle to randomly select and assign a topic to each school. The intention of these debates is to actively engage our communities and stakeholders at large in healthy conversations on both national and international issues that affect our nation, whether directly or indirectly. These debates are also in line with our five, with our corporate values as an institution, as social security, and to a larger extent to our five-year strategic plan. One of the 10 values that we give the highest priority, highest importance for the board to accomplish its mission, vision, and strategic objectives is its social responsibility and ongoing pursuit to positively impact national development. To end, I am proud to reiterate that our social security philosophy is to put the customer at the heart of everything we do. It is cemented in the provision of personalized service experience characterized by effective, efficient, accessible, and accurate service delivered seamlessly through the customer's choice path. Once again, thank you very much for being here with us this morning. I'd like to wish the very best to both competing teams, Gale University and John Paul Second JC. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Mr. Villas, for the welcome address. At this time, I'm going to call on my very good friend, Mrs. Gail Osayeta, to come and introduce for us the judges and the moderator, after which I will turn the rest of the day's proceedings over to the persons who will conduct it. Put your hands together for Mrs. Gail Osayeta. I forget to mention Mrs. Agnes Flowers. I invited her this morning to whistle the national anthem for us, but she declined because we had already asked the young lady to sing it for us. Good morning, one and all. I would like to introduce, introduce, sorry, Dr. Candy Armstrong, who is currently the Director of Education Support Services in the Ministry of Education, Education, Youth and Sports in Belize City. Her responsibilities include facilitating the coordinated functioning units of the service area, and they are the National Resource Center for Inclusive Education, school community liaison security, counseling and care and school health and nutrition according to their goals and objectives. Her previous employment include education officer in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports in San Pedro and Keycocker, field experience supervisor at the University of Belize and literacy coordinator Caribbean Center of Excellence for Teacher Training and the University of Belize, where her responsibilities included coordinating activities with teachers to improve literacy instruction and students' reading performance in 13 schools. She has voluntary experience as coordinator for the Youth Leadership Council and was the chairperson of the Board of Directors for Special Olympics of Belize. She considers herself to be self-motivated, responsible, and experienced, confident and poised, and works with schools at all levels. She is detail-oriented and is able to multitask effectively. She's an excellent communicator and has good writing skills. She's also skilled in organizing and problem solving. 
Dr. Candy Armstrong, who is a Doctor of Education degree from Oklahoma State University, a Master of Education in Educational Leadership from the University of North Florida, a Bachelor of Arts degree in Primary Education from the University of Belize, and a Trained Teacher's Diploma from the Joint Board of Teacher's Education, Belize Teacher's College, and the University of, West, of the West Indies. Join me in welcoming Dr. Candy Armstrong. Mr. Elbert Jamor Lopez is the Principal Education Officer and the Education Center Manager for the Corazal District in the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. He is responsible for supervising, monitoring, and supporting principals and teachers of pre-primary, TVET, and secondary schools in the district to ensure the effective delivery of the national curriculum using a variety of strategies and approaches. As an educator, he has over 25 years of classroom experience at the primary, secondary, and tertiary level in Belize and the United States of America. He holds a master's degree in education from Dior College of Education, Valdosta State University, Georgia, USA, and a bachelor's degree in biology education from the University College of Belize. Mr. Lopez was very instrumental in the development of an ICT framework for Caribbean for primary and secondary schools and was Belize's representative for the educational community, community sorry, of Central America and the Dominican Republic for five years. He has written several articles on the effective use of technology to improve teaching and learning and has facilitated numerous workshops for teachers. Join me in welcoming Mr. Albert Jamor Lopez. Good morning, everyone. On November 11, 2015, Miss Vanessa Richridge was appointed by government as Belize's first female Madame Attorney General and Minister for Legal Affairs. As an attorney herself, member of the Bar Association and General Legal Counsel of Belize, she hails from her private law firm of Reyes Retrige LLP. She brings to her office a high caliber of professionalism and wealth of experience. She obtained a certificate in legal education from the Norman Manley Law School, Kingston, Jamaica, and a Bachelor of Law degree from the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, Jamaica. She was also previously employed at other local organizations within Belize. Her fervent belief is that, as Belizeans, we must uphold the rule of law, and for us to become fruitful citizens, we must discover who we are through hard work, inspiration, and dedication in an effort to passionately execute that which we were called to do with a sense of purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming or Attorney General, Ms. Vanessa Retreat. It is an honor for me to introduce Dr. Leroy Almendares to you this morning. Dr. Leroy Almendares holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree, PhD, in Organizational Leadership, which he obtained at the Nova Southeastern University in the USA. He holds a Master of Arts degree in Business Administration with concentration in Economics and Strategy, which he obtained at the University of the West Indies. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree at Ferris State University, also in Economics. While pursuing his doctoral degree, his focus for his dissertation was using the debate technique as a 
as a tool to improve critical thinking in economics. Hence the reason he is no stranger to debates. He is the current Director General in the Ministry of Foreign Trade for Belize. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Leroy Amandares, our moderator, to the stage. And now the chairs have been empty for far too long. We are going to get into the debate proper. And for that, I turn the rest of the day's proceedings completely over to the moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Master of Ceremonies, Patrick Jones. And good morning, everybody. If you cannot hear me in the back, you can just raise your hand, and I will raise my voice or lower it. All right? But like we said, it's not about us. It's time to get the debate on the way. So if I can have John Paul II come to the stage along with your coaches. So I want the debaters, the alternates, and the coaches, and the same for Galen University. So if you could just come and take your place. And you can remain standing because when, we, when we're finished here, then there'll be three people sitting here and three people sitting there. And the reason for this is so that we can go over the rules, because there are rules where the debate is concerned. Audience, you are, part, you are participants, and at the end, there will be a period where the audience will be allowed to ask questions to the debaters. But the reason for doing this, and to have the coaches up here, is that all the coaching should have been completed. It means then that as soon as the coaches step off the stage, the most they can do is add a well, we won't worry about their stress levels. But the most they can do is to listen because they no longer participate. The participants will be three from here and three from here. In other words, there should be no interruption, no coaching from the coaches, okay? So with that in mind, no, there will be, there will be three debaters from each side. Two will speak, so they should have identified the two speakers. One is referred to as the whip. That person's job is to listen and to help to prepare for a response to what is said. And that response must be related to what the speaker says. So even if, in other words, there should be no prepared responses because you don't know what people will be saying. The judges will be paying keen attention to make sure that your responses are related during the argument phase to what was said, okay? It's also important that as soon as you start speaking, you identify yourselves for the tabulators, for the judges, because they are also individual scoring. Is that understood? John Paul, now this is Galen, and John Paul the second, understood. So what I will do as we did in independence is to ask the two whip, since you won't be speaking, here is your opportunity to say something. Just two of you just come to the front here, the whip from here and the whip from here. Just come to the front here for me. You are the whip? And you, okay. Now, I have a coin here, and it has a head and a tail, not two heads or two tails. Your job will be when I throw, when I spill it, you call, and then we make a determination who chose the affirmative and who does the negative. I heard heads there. He said heads. No, it doesn't mean she's a head. She called heads. <laughs> Okay, so you can, you can go back. I will now ask the alternate and the coaches to leave the stage so that we can commence the debate. Now, since you chose head, now the other thing for the benefit of the judges and the audience is that they were to prepare for the affirmative and the negative, both sides. They didn't know what side they were going to present until this coin, we spun this coin. Since you chose head, you can now choose whether you want to do the affirmative or the negative. The affirmative. Galen has chosen to do the affirmative 
which means Pope John Paul II, you will do the negative. And without any further ado, or any further waiting, remember now, what you will present is your opening remarks, not an opening argument. Eh? Based on the topic, be it resolved that gender identity is a product of nature. The affirmative, your opening remarks, and timekeepers. Just for the benefit of you all, the timekeepers and I will have eye contact. You have two minutes. As soon as your two minutes are up and you hear the bell, even if it's in mid-speak, you're supposed to freeze. Right? Not another word is supposed to be said. I was just going to say, unlike CNN, but... Um, <laughs> so it means then that as soon... In fact, we're familiar with this. All right? So affirmative, your opening statement. Esteem and warrior opponents, judges and supporters of college good debate. Good morning. My name is Mario Vieira and I am the first speaker for Guinean Eagles debate team. I am honored to be accompanied this morning by two of my colleagues, Ms. Ruby Bautista, our second speaker, and Ms. Maramela Lopez, our whip. This topic is controversial, and it has been a bit uncomfortable for me to study gender, gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation over the past three weeks. I had my own thoughts on this topic before the debate, and they had changed almost completely. I have now realized that most of what I grew up with was based on stereotype, and I am glad my mind has opened a bit more as a result of our research. I feel like a much more analytical student today, thanks to all the scientific evidence I have used and our team has used to develop our position on today's debate. I have also